Hey friends, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Kayla and today we are going to be talking about rom-com core. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about the aesthetic predicted to dominate 2023 and that is the rom-com core aesthetic. So the plan for today is to talk a little bit about rom-coms themselves then we'll move into sort of the breakdown of the aesthetic sort of the clothing pieces and style sensibilities that are incorporated in this aesthetic and then i have styled five outfits inspired by rom-coms from the late 80s to the 2000s to give you some outfit inspiration but before we jump into the video don't forget to pause go down below and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already i do videos like this all the time so if you guys are interested in any sort of aesthetic exploration content or thrifting content, styling content, etc., etc. This might be the place for you. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the rom-com core breakdown. Okay, so I have my notes here. So if I'm looking down, that is what I'm looking at. Now let's jump right on in. So at the end of 2022, Pinterest actually released a marketing and search data analysis predicting that rom-com core, based on the things people were searching on Pinterest, would be the trending aesthetic of 2023. According to the analysis, quote, Y2K fashion has been trending for a while. Now people are chasing more than an aesthetic. They want that main character energy that defined the movie industry in the 2000s. That means upgrading everyday moments and making small habits like trips to the coffee shop feel like a scene from their favorite rom-com. But this time, they're the star. This aesthetic is largely inspired by rom-coms of the 90s and 2000s, but I did include When Harry Met Sally in my styling inspiration because it is often cited as a popular rom-com that's in the ethos of this aesthetic. That film did come out in 1989. <laughs> Pinterest goes on to note that this aesthetic, while inspired by 90s and 2000s rom-coms, is also inspired by Barbie core, which was a really popular aesthetic and has been for the last couple of years now, but it mostly plays with hyper femininity, with like pinks and mini skirts and high heels and things like that. All things that you will see in this aesthetic too. I also think that it bears a bit of resemblance to the downtown girl aesthetic, which I've done a whole breakdown on. You guys can check that out up here if you're interested in learning more about that. But essentially that is an aesthetic that romanticizes living in New York City in the autumn and winter. And popular pieces also include mini skirts and tights, but then also oversized jeans and oversized sweaters paired together. Rory Gilmore and Brittany Murphy are often cited as two very big inspirations for that aesthetic. And Brittany Murphy is actually another big inspiration for this aesthetic that we're gonna be talking about today as well. So again, if you guys wanna break down on either the main character aesthetic, since this also is incorporated in this aesthetic or the downtown girl aesthetic, you guys can check out the full breakdowns of those ones that I've already done. Okay, so let's talk about rom-coms themselves. Rom-coms date back to the time of William Shakespeare in the 1500s. And they've of course remained pretty steadily in our public consciousness. To this day, new, exciting, and fun rom-coms are still being made. They rose to contemporary popularity in the 1920s and remained pretty popular until the mid 2000s. Lauded for creating a female safe haven in a male-dominated industry, these movies do cater towards female audiences, though of course they can be enjoyed by anyone. The rom-com started to fall off, shall we say, in the early 2010s, largely because of a lack of diversity and people were beginning to feel a bit bored with the same stories being retold in different ways. As Abigail Sherlock wrote in her paper exploring the romantic comedy from the 90s to today, quote, these films have always been a female space in a male-dominated industry. Often the women portrayed in romantic comedies are successful independent women. Even as a child, I could relate to these women on some level. They weren't superheroes, they weren't princesses, they were people just like me, end quote. She added, quote, Romantic comedies are films that are closest to my real life experiences as well. They're digestible, fun, and easy to watch, end quote. Lots and lots of people are able to see themselves in romantic comedy situations, many of them which handle tropes like friends to lovers or enemies to lovers. We romanticize the idea of meeting someone in the grocery aisle, reaching for the same orange, and these movies 
created these warm, safe, romanticized ideals of life. However, romantic comedies did start to peter off in popularity in the mid 2010s as many people yearned to see more diversity in a space that was largely white and heteronormative. And while these stories did often bend to match the socio-political feelings of the times that they were created in, for example, in the 1960s and 70s, they became more sexually aware amid the sexual revolution. It took up until the genre started to peter off for more diverse casts to be introduced. The success of films like Crazy Rich Asians to All the Boys I Loved Before and Love, Simon proved that audiences still loved these stories, but marginalized groups were also yearning to see themselves portrayed in these warm, feel-good films. Now, that's not to say the films that were created during the rom-com boom don't belong to everyone. They absolutely do, and everyone should be able to enjoy them. But I do think it's important that when looking at this aesthetic and sort of reviewing films of the past, that we acknowledge its shortcomings. And as we reimagine rom-coms in this fashion and lifestyle aesthetic, that we include and bring with us messages of inclusion and diversity. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about rom-coms themselves, let's talk a little bit more about this aesthetic. So this aesthetic largely draws inspiration from the fashion seen on the female protagonists in 90s and 2000s rom-coms. Like I said before, I did include When Harry Met Sally, which was made in 1989, but 89 might as well be 90. Am I right? <laughs> This aesthetic really leans into the more feminine styles seen on these characters. Characters like Elle Woods in Legally Blonde or Cher and Dion in Clueless. And in terms of the lifestyle portion of this aesthetic, it really hones in on making each moment sort of very romantic and beautiful and just feel a little bit larger than life. Essentially, it highlights the idea of romanticizing your life. So instead of just pouring yourself a coffee and going on your merry way, maybe make it special. Use a special pitcher and a cute cup and really make the moment feel special. In terms of clothing pieces, it utilizes slip dresses, cropped tops and cropped sweaters, baby tees, strappy heels or pointed toe heels. Also, I feel like mules are very popular within this aesthetic baguette bags, claw clips, knee socks or frilly socks, blazers, particularly leather blazers or tweed blazers, low rise jeans, which phew, take me out. I will not be wearing low rise jeans, but I know some people really like them. If you're not really into a low rise jean though, you could always go for a mid or high rise as long as it's skinny or straight legged. It matches this aesthetic. Headbands, mini skirts, midi dresses, sundresses, floral prints, plaids, and tie-dyes are all popular prints within this aesthetic. Films that are often cited as style inspiration for this aesthetic include Clueless, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, 10 Things I Hate About You, 13 Going on 30, When Harry Met Sally, You've Got Mail, Sleepless in Seattle, Legally Blonde, Never Been Kissed, and 500 Days of Summer. I think it should also be noted that in films like 10 Things I Hate About You or How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days or even What a Girl Wants starring Amanda Bynes, those main characters fit more within the not like the other girls sort of trope, but there is also space for styles like that within this aesthetic too. So wearing sort of the longer baby tees with the low rise cargo pants or baggy jeans and converse can also really seamlessly fit into this aesthetic. So I like that it kind of has a wide span of style and it kind of creates a space for lots and lots of different types of people who have different kinds of styles. So that's a little bit about the aesthetic. I didn't see any specific color palette that was assigned to this aesthetic. Seems like really you can bounce all over the place. I did see lots of pastels and pinks and floral prints as I was doing research on this, but I really think you can make any sort of color palette work for this. And it really just seems like the best way to go when trying to find outfits to style for this aesthetic is to go directly to the source, find some stills from your favorite rom-coms, or maybe even have a romantic comedy night and just watch all of your favorite rom-coms and take note of some of your favorite outfits and go from there. That's kind of how I approach putting my outfits together for this video as well. I sort of Googled some of my favorite rom-coms and I picked out different outfits that I really liked from those films. And so with that said, here are the five outfits I styled for the rom-com core aesthetic. Okay friends, we're coming in first with this Dion inspired look from Clueless and oh my goodness, I cannot wait to be wearing this outfit all the time. I love it so, so, so much. So let's start from the bottom as we do. Starting from the bottom, I have on these black heels. You guys, I thrifted these at the Goodwill brand new with tags. 
I'm like, they're the exact shoe I went to Target to see if I could buy and they didn't have any. And then I found them at the thrift store brand new and in my size. So I picked them up. These are a moderate sized heel. I don't really like a really, really tall heel. So I was really happy with this one. It's a moderate sized heel, maybe just a few inches. And it's got the little strappy bits around the ankle and over the toe. I decided to pair these socks underneath. I know in Clueless they do a lot of like over the knee or knee high socks. I don't own any knee high socks, but I did think that this was a really fun combination as well. Just pairing a pair of frilly socks underneath. I thought that was really, really darling and it really matches my personality and my personal taste. Then moving up, I have on this dress, still unsure of the color. If you saw last week's video where I talked about thrifting this at the Goodwill, I am not sure what the color is. It could be gray, it could be black, it could be green, it could be blue. It is unclear. I think it's green, but I, I really don't know. <laughs> um, and this is just a slinky jersey knit sort of sweater type of dress. And this was sort of the closest thing I had to Dion's dress, which I think is quite similar. I think hers might come in a little bit more at the waist and be a bit more A-line shaped. Then underneath it, I paired this Liz Claiborne in a collared button-up shirt. This I've had for a really long time, but this is also from the Goodwill. I like that this one has a bit of a larger sized collar, so it played a little bit more with Dion's collar as well, though hers is quite oversized. And then I also left the cuffs unbuttoned since hers have this sort of flared open sort of messy detailing to them. For accessories, I just threw on this little white headband. This is from Old Navy. It's just like a knitted material and it was just the closest one I had to what Dion's wearing and I honestly love these really thick headbands at the moment. I have a couple that I've been wearing quite often and I love that this one's sort of a creamy beige color. I also just threw on these earrings here. These are from the In Route Best Dress collection which is unfortunately no longer available, but these are just some safety pin earrings with some little pearls on the bottom. And that's it for accessories. I feel like this works really well for this aesthetic. It's sort of feminine, yeah, collegiate feeling, yeah, very main character vibes. It's also playing with the midi dress, which is really popular, as well as pairing it with this, a pair of heels. And again, headbands were a really popular accessory scene throughout this aesthetic too. So yeah, I think this one is really great, and I feel like you can have so many main character moments in this outfit. Okay, up next, we're going 13 going on 30. Now, I have to tell you, I cannot remember this movie at all, but I do think that the outfit turned out pretty good. So starting from the bottom, I have on my little acrylic heels, which are very circa 90s, 2000s. So I thought they were perfect for this. Those actually thrifted and then I did a bit of an upcycle on them because they were quite damaged, but they are from the Goodwill. This whole outfit is also from the Goodwill. Oh, Moving up, yeah. I have on this slip ish kind of dress this was from the pajama section but it's not your traditional slip material which i do think jennifer gardner her dress is a bit more satin slip kind of looking material whereas the dress i'm wearing is like a jersey cotton type of material like nightgown almost i do really really love how it looks i think it's similar enough in the cut and in the color palette as well but yeah so the dress is like a meant to emulate sort of a slip dress it's got that mesh bit on the top which also feels very 90s and 2000s and it's a spaghetti strap dress which i think is definitely going to be a big part of this aesthetic too i did throw on this big wool overcoat on which is similar to jennifer garner's as well this one i actually thrifted at the goodwill as well quite a while ago now i've had it for a few years but it pairs really really well with this dress and it really plays with the fun white and cream accents in the dress it also really works with the bag that i chose which is this Anne klein one i felt like shoulder bags worked really well for this aesthetic too so i did go ahead and go with this one and it is basically the exact same color as my jacket so that's the second outfit i think again we're playing with the slip dresses and the jelly shoes and the shoulder bags that work really really well with this aesthetic in terms of accessories i kept on the same earrings as before i mostly keep to these earrings throughout the whole video Okay, so up next I have this Meg Ryan look. I think this is from When Harry Met Sally, but this was actually a last minute switch. I had tried to style a different outfit and the pieces just did not work together. So I went for this look instead because I had similar enough pieces. 
So starting from the bottom, I have on some brown loafers. They're very old and I stopped growing when I was in like eighth grade. So I've been the same height and my feet have been the same size since then. So some of my shoes from like eighth grade still fit me and I still have. So I have on these loafers. They're from a brand called Minnetonka Moccasins and they're just so, so comfortable. And I think they work really well with this outfit. I love pairing black and brown together. So for the jeans, I went with these black jeans here. I think Meg is wearing dark wash blue jeans but i did go for these black jeans here and i thought that they worked just as well they're a straight leg cut and they're also high-waisted which is similar to meg's look these jeans are from old navy and the belt that i paired with it is from walmart Moving up, I have on this red turtleneck that we randomly found in our house and we didn't know who it belonged to, so I claimed it. Um, it is, I think, from Walmart originally and it's a really nice, thick material. It is so cozy and it is honestly a perfect match to Meg's. I think turtlenecks are such a great styling piece, especially when doing rom-com court in the winter. Turtlenecks are just so chic and can be styled in so many beautiful ways, especially you can style them underneath slip dresses and sort of transition those pieces into the cooler months then over top of it i just have on my brown leather jacket meg is really wearing a blazer but i didn't have one that was anything like this so i went for this leather jacket here leather jackets have always been sort of just a classic piece for my earrings i just kept them the same with the in route best dressed pin earrings Okay, this one is so fun. This is another Jennifer Garner look, and I just thought this was such a pretty look. She's wearing a floral midi sundress, and now mine is substantially longer than hers, but I felt like the styles were similar enough that it really worked for this. Now, of course, this is like really leaning into the hyper femininity and the very girly girl type of style that is seen within this aesthetic. Also, Jennifer's outfit feels very soft. I think if maybe I had a tan and bag and shoe combo this outfit would also feel very soft i did go with black accents because there's black in the dress and i only have a black baguette bag and because i wanted to use that bag i wanted to do the matching shoe and bag combo anyway starting from the bottom i have on the same black heels that i thrifted at the goodwill then moving up i have on this beautiful dress here this is originally from boohoo i thrifted this on poshmark a couple of years ago and it is so so pretty i don't wear it enough i really really need to i love the print I love the cut. I love the little slit and I just felt like it was so pretty and so feminine and girly and just feels so me at the moment. I also love it has this really lovely sweetheart neckline and a gentle puff sleeve with some ruffles around the sleeve as well. For accessories, I threw on this pearl necklace that I believe I got on Amazon to do an Audrey Hepburn cosplay a couple of years ago. I really like it. I, another piece I don't wear enough of. And then I also have on this pink pearl beaded headband that I got from Target a while back on clearance because somebody had drawn on the bottom of the headband. No one's ever going to see the underneath, so why not? So it's really, really cute, and I love that it tied the pearls in together. And this lovely blush pink color is also in the dress, so I thought it tied in really well. And again, I did the black shoe to black bag combo, so this is just a little black baguette bag that I got at Target as well. Okay, so now this one maybe diverges the most from the source material, but I do still think they feel pretty similar. Now, this is another Clueless outfit. This is Ty from Clueless, played by the late Brittany Murphy. So for this outfit here, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. I started with my big black chunky loafers. Now, do I think Ty would have worn these shoes? Probably not, but I do feel like it was a fun way for me to incorporate my personal style into this aesthetic. This combination of frilly socks and chunky loafers are my go-to at the moment. The loafers I thrifted on Poshmark, and then my little frilly socks I got on Amazon in like a multi-pack. I absolutely am loving them at the moment. I did go ahead and style them over top of a pair of ribbed tights that has a really similar texture to the ones that Ty is wearing. These tights I got from Target and they are so freaking comfortable. If you're in the market for some fleece line tights, I cannot recommend these ones enough. So now moving up, I have on this brown leather mini skirt. This is actually from Walmart. And I think that the shape and style of the skirt is quite similar to what you would see in this aesthetic. Also really similar to Ty's outfit. Now, of course, hers is plaid and I do wish I had a plaid skirt like this. I've been on the hunt for a while now. So for now, I went with this skirt and I think it works really well. I don't know if leather skirts are maybe the most popular within this aesthetic, but they definitely were worn in the 2000s and the 90s. So, I mean, it's possible. It is possible. 
Now the sweater I think is pretty spot on. Obviously it's a different color from Ty's sweater, which is like a navy blue color. And mine is red, but the cut is quite similar. They're cropped. They've got the long sleeves. They've got that sort of sweatery texture and they've got the little buttons up the front. This is also from Walmart and I love it so much. I also love the details in this sweater and the tiny floral buttons, which I think are so, so cute. Underneath, I just threw on a white tank top and then I threw my hair up in a little ponytail. For accessories, I just went with my little black baguette bag again and I also went for these little pearl earrings that I made for myself. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know there was a lot of information at the front there, but I hope it, you found it interesting and insightful and I actually really enjoyed doing the research for this one. I love the outfits that I managed to put together as well. Y'all have to let me know which one is your favorite down below. But aside from that, feel free to give the studio a thumbs up if you enjoyed. You can also subscribe down below if you haven't already. I create fashion related content every single week. Everything from thrifting to styling to aesthetic explorations like this one. I also love a good bonus video every once in a while with a random DIY or throwing a tea party or book tier ranking kinds of thing so if you are at all interested in any of that kind of stuff you can subscribe to the channel down below you can also follow me on instagram or tiktok for additional content anyway that's all i really have for you guys so don't forget it costs absolutely nothing to be kind so be kind to yourself and others and i'll talk to you guys next time bye